I started reviewing SSDs back in 2008. And uh, for the year prior to that, I was a, just a genuine user. Um, and back then, all SSDs pretty much really, really sucked. Uh, it all changed in 2008 where Intel brought the X25M out and performance finally improved, prices started to go down, and, and things finally got interesting. Now, Samsung was a competitor in the consumer SSD space back then. Uh, it actually started with these really expensive $1,000 SLC drives, uh, single level memory cell. Uh, but eventually, Samsung put out an MLC drive, helped drive prices down, uh, but honestly, it just wasn't a very, very good performer. Uh, it was reliable, it was stable, it worked with a lot of configurations, but it, again, it, it wasn't a good performer. You could get much better performance from Intelinx or Intel uh, at similar, if not lower prices. Back then, Samsung would sell to companies like Corsair and OCZ. They would take their reference design, then Corsair and OCZ would rebrand the drives and, and sell them under their own name. Uh, that's a, a very familiar business model to you know, Intelinx and Sandforce today, but back then, Samsung participated in that. Since then, things have China kind of changed. Uh, Samsung kind of got uh, I don't want to say embarrassed, but kind of embarrassed by how well Intelinx and, and a lot of other smaller competitors did in that enthusiast space. Uh, so it retreated a bit. And we didn't really see much from them. They did, they did a lot of OEM stuff and, and they got out of that kind of rebranded consumer space um, until last year. Last year we got the Samsung SSD 470. This was a Samsung branded drive. Uh, you couldn't buy it through OCZ or Corsair or any of the, the old partners. Um, you could buy it at Newegg and it was just called a Samsung SSD. Um, performance was good. It, it was actually respectable. Uh, whereas the old drive you couldn't really recommend, this one worked. Uh, it was actually the same basic drive that Apple shipped in, um, or at least same basic controller that Apple shipped in a lot of its notebooks and a lot of other OEMs have been using. Uh, it was reliable, it was well validated. The only regional issue was it was a three gigabit drive in a world where six gigabit SATA had started to kind of gain popularity. Um, especially going into 2011, where you had the Vertex 3, the Intel SSD 510, the Crucial M4, even the Crucial C300, there was no real reason to get the 470. It was good, but it really didn't do any convincing. Now that's potentially all about to change. So Samsung recently sent us uh, a drive they just recently announced, the Samsung SSD 830. The major jump in nomenclatures because this goes from 3 gigabit SATA, which is what the 470 was, to 6 gigabit. A transition a bit later than Intel, Crucial, OCC, and, and Sandforce and the like, but an important one nonetheless. So what does this drive do? Uh, like all of the other companies that, that kind of made the 3 gig to 6 gig transition, performance goes up. And that's important because that's one of the major things that was holding back the 470. Like I said, reliability was good, it had decent track record. Um, but it really wasn't in the upper echelon of performance. The 830 changes all of that. As we saw in our testing of the drive, it's not the fastest thing on the market now, but it's in, I'd say, the upper quartile. It's up there with the Intel SSD 510, the Crucial M4. Uh, Sandforce still outpaces it, but uh, Samsung actually has what I would believe, or, or what I would call uh, uh, an Intel-like track record when it comes to reliability and validation testing. Look, these drives are in a lot of OEM systems, a lot of very important OEM systems. Um, and as a result, they have to work. So at least in the past, if, if we can judge Samsung by its history, uh, I would assume the 830 is gonna be similar in that regard. It, it should be a reliable drive. Obviously, we'll find out over the coming months. Um, but, but that's kind of what makes this all very, very interesting. We finally have, you know, pr prior to this, if you wanted to have a reliable drive, um, that was also the top of the charts, you had to go Intel. Well, the problem with Intel is its drives are really, really expensive. Um, you know, they're, they're appreciably more than, than the competitive OCC or, or Crucial drives. Uh, and until recently, Crucial had had a lot of firmware issues. Now, a lot of those have been worked out. And, and we all know the, the current state of Sandforce, right? Where uh, you're either gonna have a great experience or, you know, there, there might be some issues that you'll have to wait for a future firmware update. So if you've really only had Intel as this option for, you know, kind of guaranteed not guaranteed, but you know, good enough reliability track record. Uh, Samsung might give us another option there with the 830. You get performance that, like I said, is comparable to these guys um, and a track record that's actually pretty decent. So what's inside the 830? The 830 is actually, uh, it's a ultra slim drive, it's seven millimeters thick. Um, and unlike the uh, Intel SSD 320, for example, it doesn't have any, uh, extra plastic around it to fit in, you know, larger nine millimeter plus bays. So it's, it's strictly a seven millimeter drive. Uh, the drive's available in four capacities, 64 gigs, 128 gigs, 256, and 512. 
Uh, Samsung actually sent us a 512 gig drive, which should perform identically to the 256, and hopefully we'll be getting the 64 and 128 at some point in the future to, to kind of hit those uh, smaller capacities and price points as well. Um, internally to the drive, it uses Samsung's own controller with Samsung's own NAND and Samsung's own DRAM as a cache. Uh, this is really very, very scary to other SSD makers out there because Typically, you either have to buy a controller from somewhere else, or you definitely have to buy the NAND from somewhere else, and or the DRAM from someone else. Um, and that quickly adds up. Samsung can get good deals on all of these parts because they make all of them. Uh, little is known about the controller architecture itself. Samsung says there are three controllers or three CPU cores, cores in there. Uh, as we've seen in the past, the number of cores doesn't really matter. What matters the most is your firmware algorithms, um, how well you design your software, stuff like that. Um, so I, I, to me, that sounds more marketing than, than actual tangible advantage, but you know, that is what Samsung says. Uh, the drive comes with 256 megs of DDR2 memory. Um, so user data is actually cached in this DRAM, uh, which is in stark contrast to how Intel works. Um, so Intel doesn't actually use its, its much smaller DRAM to store user data. It's just used to cache, um, uh, page mapping cables and things like that. Uh, the controller itself, the major difference, at least according to Samsung compared to the 470, is the inclusion of uh, 6 gigabit SATA for support. There are obviously firmware tweaks that help enable that. Uh, the 512 gig drive they sent us uses toggle mode DDR NAND. Um, so this is comparable to the Onfi stuff that you get in Intel drives. Uh, data rate per NAND package is 133 megabits per second. Uh, and the main point is once you have all of that aggregated, the drive's good for, at least in the 256 and 512 gig configurations, it's good for speeds of uh, south of 500 megabytes per second reads. Um, I think we measured just under that. Um, and in terms of writes, you're looking at anywhere in the, the mid 300s to uh, just at 400 megabytes per second, depending on the workload. Random performance is good, it's competitive. Um, and like I said, across the board, it, it's, it's a very, very high performing drive. It's not the fastest we've tested, but it's fast enough. If Samsung can continue to deliver on the reliability side uh, as it has in the past, and if it can price this accordingly with uh, the competitors in the market, it, it should actually have a very, very good drive on its hands. Um, the drives will be available starting in October, and uh, Samsung is expecting pricing to be in line with where the SSD 470 is today. Now, I'd expect the SSD 470 to be a bit more discounted than the 830 will be when, it, when it's introduced. But if Sam, Samsung can stick to that, uh, that pricing strategy, that puts it just in line with the Crucial M4 uh, and definitely cheaper than the Intel SSD 510. What I really want to see out of this thing is another reliable, high-performing alternative to the Intel series of drives. You know, it's clear that, by the way, Intel's been pricing its drives, that it's not not interested in engaging in price wars in the high-end consumer space, which I can understand Intel likes to keep it 60% margins. But that being said, we, we need another Intel-like competitor from a reliability standpoint addressing this consumer market. And I'm really, really hoping that that's what Samsung's gonna be. And my testing, the drive did very, very well. Um, and I'll be doing more testing over the coming weeks and hopefully we'll see continued reliability and, and a, a continuation of Samsung's track record in that regard. If you're looking for a new SSD, especially if you've got a, a Sandy Bridge or a 60 gigabit controller on board, uh, the 830 might be worth your consideration. Um, as with all SSDs, you always want to make sure that you don't want to be the guinea pig. You want to look at forums, look at other people with your configuration, see what their experiences are with their drive. Uh, I'm hoping that once this, once this thing ships, it won't interrupt Samsung's track record and we'll actually see uh, a drive that you can just purchase, trust, and, and you know get to work with. Um, in terms of complaints with the drive, the only real issue is uh, a fundamental difference of opinion. Samsung likes to do uh, idle time garbage collection instead of kind of active garbage collection on its drives. Uh, so what this means is, you know, if you've read the SSD anthology, if you've read any of my, my deeper SSD works, you know that over time you kind of end up with this fragmented state of data in your NAND. Uh, there, <clears throat> there are two ways of dealing with that. You can either deal with that as you write, so every time you write some data, you kind of clear, uh, clean things up and, and organize stuff, or you can put that off and when you're not doing any writing, the controller can go off and, and reorganize things. Uh, personally, I prefer the former approach. It's, it's what Intel does and, and it tends to provide a more consistent user experience. What Samsung and Crucial and others um, prefer to do is kind of delayed garbage collection. So you do a lot of that garbage collection when the user's not doing anything. In theory, it works, uh, but depending on your usage model, you might see a tangible uh, degradation in performance until the drive's able to clean up after itself. 
Uh, again, for, for most desktop users, especially if you have trim enabled under your OS, I don't think this is going to be uh, a major issue. It's, like I said, a difference in opinion, um, and it's something that I do hope that, that Samsung uh, reconsider, reconsiders going forward. Anyways, that's it. That's my review of the Samsung SSD 830. If you want full data and, and all the analysis, uh, check out the review at nontech.com. Thank you for watching.